J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson's Star Wars movies certainly had their moments along the way. However, this was also a trilogy crammed full of absolutely ridiculous developments, idiotic pieces of writing, and the unforgivable wasting of many a compelling hero and villain. So I am Gareth, this is What Culture Star Wars, and here are the 10 dumbest things in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Number 10. Undoing Rey's Nobody Origins Coming into The Last Jedi, the Force-sensitive scavenger from Jakku known as Rey had spent years waiting for the return of her parents, with many assuming this was all leading to the sensational reveal of the central figure being related to another famous family in the galaxy. But Ryan Johnson had no interest in giving fans what he saw as the easiest thing she could hear though, brilliantly making Rey a nobody instead as a way of forcing her to find out who she was for herself. Then J.J. Abrams took one look at that unexpected and rather bold development, and said that's great and all, but what if she was actually a Palpatine? In the director's mind, coming from the worst possible place was the more shocking thing to discover. Now sure, Abrams felt this Rise of Skywalker retcon would ultimately show how some things are more powerful than blood, but Johnson's twist surely did the same thing, right? So choosing to undo such a strong narrative shift, and instead getting Rey wrapped up in silly Palpatine Skywalker last name nonsense, just undermined what was already a powerful message one film prior. Number 9. Wasting Numerous Antagonists For every terrifying Darth Vader or despicable Emperor Palpatine, pre-return that is, there's also been a number of once intriguing villains who ultimately ended up being stupidly wasted in the Skywalker saga. That was sadly very much the case throughout the sequel trilogy too. Though Kylo Ren certainly made for a compelling and layered villain turned hero, the rest of the enemies on show range from needlessly dumb to ridiculously underutilized. Captain Phasma once seemed destined to become an icon in her own right, after catching the eye during trailers for Episode 7, The Force Awakens. But she just ended up being a slightly shinier stormtrooper to be swatted away a few times. General Hugs could have been the sequel's slightly more unhinged answer to Grand Moff Tarkin, but just wound up turning into a silly pantomime distraction. Then you have Supreme Leader Snoke, a properly sinister top villain brought to life by a fully motion-captured-up Andy Serkis. Only instead of backing Ren's master as an even bigger and more horrifying threat than the last wrinkly menace of the series, Ryan Johnson opted to chop him in half before J.J. Abrams came along and made him a silly strand-cast Palpatine puppet. Why create more engaging and frightening new adversaries for our heroes to overcome, when you can just idiotically turn them all into unintimidating jokes instead, eh? Now I've got a quick question for you, who is your favourite Star Wars villain of all time? Probably not a sequels one, but you let me know in the comment section down below. Number 8. Deciding to ignore some of the most compelling central figures Along with unforgivably wasting a bunch of interesting new villains during episodes 7 to 9, a number of central heroes were also ridiculously ignored in the sequel saga. After being introduced as another brave Resistance member in The Last Jedi, the fearless Rose Tico went from being near the center of our hero's fight against the First Order, to almost disappearing entirely in The Rise of Skywalker. Rather than doubling down on Finn's new love interest in the face of racist online bullies targeting Kelly Marie Tran for her work in the middle flick, the folks behind Episode 9 ended up giving her a grand total of just over one minute of screen time. Nice one, Disney. Then you have the magnetic John Boyega, who helped introduce the world to the defecting First Order Stormtrooper Finn in The Force Awakens. Despite being marketed as one of the major players in the new films, Finn just ended up being little more than a side character, being sent out on side quests before becoming a completely wasted bit part player in the final episode. Boyega himself put it best, telling GQ back in 2020, do not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed to the side. It's not good. Not good indeed. Number 7. Not having Leia hug Chewbacca In the wake of the tragic demise of everyone's favourite rebellious smuggler Han Solo, Rey, Chewbacca and Finn reunite with the rest of the Resistance towards the end of The Force Awakens. It's here when an understandably heartbroken General Leia Organa meets Rey for the very first time, offering the young scavenger a hug as the two grieve the loss of Solo. Only what could have been a rather touching moment instantly had many puzzled. Why on earth would Leia choose to squeeze a woman she's never met over the longtime pal of Han and her own old friend Chewbacca? 
the iconic Wookiee was right there. And she just wandered right on past the no doubt devastated Chewie. JJ Abrams has even gone on record to note how he regrets not having Chewie hug Leia here. The director explained that the force sensitive Rey and Leia would have likely still learned about each other off screen before ever meeting. And he also admitted to Slash Film that his intentions were to show that an in pain Chewie was just focused on looking after an injured Finn in the scene. But with the Wookiee still being in Leia's vicinity so soon after the death of a person they both held dear, he'd unintentionally felt almost like a slight, and Abrams' foolish oversight ultimately undermined a potentially quite moving embrace. Number 6. Not Killing Off Chewbacca Two films after being shockingly ignored by Leia on Dakar, Chewie was suddenly captured by the villainous First Order during the Rise of Skywalker. Then, as Rey attempted to bring down that Chewie-carrying transport, whilst Kylo Ren pulled the spacecraft in the opposite direction, the granddaughter of Palpatine inadvertently pulverized that ship via unexpected force lightning. Just like that, one of the OG icons was tragically killed by his mate a daring move that highlighted the level of raw power Rey possessed, and supported the idea that she may even be moving that little bit closer towards the dark side. But rather than let that heartbreaking and deeply surprising moment be, Abrams and co just opted for the coward's way out, soon revealing that Chewie was actually on another transport the whole time. Instead of leaving folks watching on relieved, the lazy twist just irritated many a Star Wars fan and made them feel stupid for ever believing Disney would have the guts to commit to such a bold idea in the first place. Cheers for watching this What Culture Star Wars video today. Now go and hit that subscribe button down below for more of this sort of glorious stuff. Number 5. The Sith Dagger Matching Up With The Destroyed Death Star as you likely expected coming into this list, The Rise of Skywalker unfortunately contains more unbelievably stupid moments than any other sequel entry. Yes, it was also the Star Wars flick that finally brought back the incredible Lando Calrissian and chucked one of the finest duels of the series into the Skywalker saga on Keth Beer. But that latter part of the story also involved one of the dumbest moments of the whole trilogy, as Rey and Co search for the Sith Wayfinder that will take them to the Sith world of Exegol. The granddaughter of Palpatine uses the Sith dagger they've picked up to locate the all-important item. You see, that special knife just so happened to match up perfectly with the way the completely wrecked second Death Star was lying in the sea, with its tape measure thingy then showing the gang where they needed to go. That's right, not only did the group manage to luckily land on exactly the right part of the planet to view this section of the broken space station, Rey also conveniently pulled out the Wayfinder Finding Dagger in the precise location needed for it to line up with the one vital chunk of Death Star wreckage. What are the chances, eh? As far as plot contrivances go, they just don't come much sillier than this dumb dagger nonsense. Number 4. Finn has something to tell Rey, but decides to keep it to himself. As already noted, John Boyega's charismatic one-time stormtrooper Finn was massively underutilized in The Rise of Skywalker in particular. When our heroes find themselves being dragged into a sinking field on Persana, Finn lets Rey know that he has something to tell her. But when nudged on the subject after they survive, he simply says he'll let her know later on. Later, bafflingly never actually comes in that flick though, with the dumb call being made for him to just keep that interesting information to himself. Boyega was quick to confirm on Twitter slash X that Finn wasn't going to tell Rey he was in love with her. Then, after choosing not to deliver the answers to this mystery in the film itself, Abrams eventually revealed at a Q&A screening afterwards that Finn wanted to tell Rey he was actually Force-sensitive. Admittedly, there are a few hints to be found in the flick that point to Finn being a Force user, like the fact he had a feeling where the nav signal was coming from during the Battle of Exegol, but choosing not to reveal such a massive detail in the film itself, and just throwing it out casually at a Q&A, was a hugely puzzling move. Number 3. A Good Question For Another Time the Force Awakens not only introduced viewers to Rey, Finn, and other new faces like the Pirate Queen, Maz Kanata, it also saw the return of an item just as iconic as any member of the original and prequel trilogies, Anakin and Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. But how did the little old alien Kanata come to possess such a legendary laser sword? Well, that's exactly what Han Solo wanted to know in the feature. Only, instead of just chucking out a simple but intriguing response, Maz shrugged off that massive question and told the group she'd share another time. Just like Boyega's thing he needed to tell Rey, that revelation never actually ended up on screen though, because J.J. Abrams seemingly just gets a kick out of teasing fans with things he has no intention of fully explaining in his Star Wars movies. 
The director did actually intend on originally revealing this secret in a montage during episode 7, but noted during the movie's director's commentary that it was a story they could just tell another time, before then proceeding to infuriatingly do anything but that. Cheers, JJ. Number 2. They Fly Now? Closing out with two more totally unwise things that went down during that modern-day masterpiece known as The Rise of Skywalker, poor John Boyega was once again caught up in a rather dumb scenario in that final sequel. Remember when the gang are trying to keep from being blown to bits by the First Order on Pasana? Well, as they speed across the desert, Finn spots how these particular stormtroopers are equipped with jetpacks, meaning that they can very much fly now. But what may have initially just felt like a poor throwaway joke in the flick was actually a somewhat dumb statement when you take a second to think about it. Troopers soaring through the air with rockets on their backs isn't exactly anything new in this galaxy far, far away, is it? Boyega himself even rolled his eyes at the stupid line whilst doing press for Episode 9, noting how clone troopers were using jetpacks in the Clone Wars, either as a cringy attempt at humour or just a generally puzzling statement in this universe. They fly now, they fly now, they fly now is an undeniably dumb few seconds of sequel dialogue. And number one, somehow Palpatine returned. Cheating death wasn't anything new in the Star Wars universe before the events of The Rise of Skywalker, but even with Darth Sidious suffering a somewhat similar fate to the eventually returning Darth Maul during Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, it was largely accepted that the Emperor wasn't going to pull a Maul and return from the grave. Even George Lucas let Palpatine actor Ian McDiarmid know that the powerful Sith was definitely dead after his Death Star fall. But somehow, Palpatine did ultimately return, didn't he? And in doing so, J.J. Abrams & Co. provided Star Wars with one of its dumbest ever developments, along with one of the most idiotic lines in movie history. Oscar Isaac deserved better, damn it. In a move that absolutely no one understandably saw coming, it was revealed that Palpatine's essence had survived the fall and been transferred into a clone body on Exegol. On top of feeling like the worst kind of nostalgia, Palpatine's return also completely undermined the sequel's other big bad Snoke, after it was revealed, as already noted, that he was just being used as the Emperor's stupid puppet this whole time. If that wasn't bad enough, this unwanted resurrection undid one of the greatest moments of the entire Skywalker saga too, with Vader stepping Stepping back towards the light and killing off Palpatine to save his son, ultimately meaning far less in the wake of this dumb return of the Sith. If only someone told Abrams and the gang not to do it.